Hi, my name's Daryl, and I'm here today talking to Chuck Phillips. He's with A-Liner, um, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about their brand new product, the Ascape, Ascape Amp. And uh, they just introduced it at the uh, Florida, uh, I guess, Super Show RV show, and they were displaying it. And so I'm kind of interested in, you know, kind of what... Um, what changes are made to this product over the regular Ascape. And I really haven't paid all that much attention to the Ascape. And so I'm also interested in knowing, you know, a little bit about the tar target demographic of the Ascape versus kind of the regular, you know, A-frame, A-liner. Um, and um, yeah, let's let's just start with that. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, Chuck, and let's get started. Sure, yeah. So I'm Chuck Phillips. I'm a... Uh one of the territory managers for A-Liner and I've been working with A-Liner since 2006. So been with the company for a very long time and I handle basically the Midwestern region, Northeastern US and Eastern Canada. So uh, my RV shows lately have been in the colder parts of the country. I wasn't lucky enough to be in Tampa last week, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I've been running around to Indianapolis and Pittsburgh and uh, on my way to Green Bay, Wisconsin this afternoon. So Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> a little, little bit different weather in my territory. <laughs> but, um, so uh, I guess at the RV show, you know, what did, you know, did you, did you get a lot of folks visiting it and what were their thoughts on the product? Yeah. So I saw, it sounds like um, the, the, so let's put it this way. The uh, Ascape has been out for multiple years okay. and Ascape amp just was introduced both the Ascape and A-Liner Amp were both introduced in September last year at uh, the big dealer show in Elkhart, Indiana. So that was the first time that we got the prototypes put together and, and introduced them to the dealer body. So the dealers um, have had the access to, like our A-Liner production started, you know, pretty much immediately following the show in September. We started building, uh, we built A-Liners through the fourth quarter and through January. So the A-Liner Amp has been on dealer lots starting in October and has made its way into a couple RV shows this year. Uh, Tampa is the first retail show that an Ascape amp has been displayed. So um, as far as I heard from those guys, the show attendance was pretty good. I think it was down a little bit from last year, but not much. And uh, from all reports, they had you know great interest across the board on Ascape and A-Liner. Okay. Um, so can you talk a little bit about um, the Ascape product and what's kind of like the demographic different mm -hmm. between, you know, those, the standard, you know, kind of pop-up um, yep. frame trailer and the Ascape. And so um, can you walk us through that a little bit on, on, you know, who might be interested in that product and what are the, some of the advantages as well as maybe the disadvantages of the Ascape versus the A-frame? Yeah. So <clears throat> demographically, they're really relatively similar because, uh, you know, the Ascape footprint is actually a smaller trailer in general than most of the A-liners. Okay. It'd be most comparably sized to like a Ranger 10 or a Scout Light. So our okay. two 10 A-liners. Okay. Um, the Ascape is uh, six and a half, well, six and a quarter feet wide is the living space. If you count the wheel wells on the exterior, if you're really doing an exterior measurement, it's about six and a half feet wide, okay. which is comparable to an A-liner. Okay. Um, and then the living space in the Ascape is about a 10 foot living space, just like a Scout Light or a Ranger 10 would be. So okay. uh, the only downside is there's, you know, slightly smaller than your average A-liner looking at, you know, 12 foot and 15 foot boxes in classics or expeditions, for example. But um, demographically, because, you know, A-liners tend to be couples units, they, you know, may bring uh, grandkids or somebody to sleep on the dinettes, but you mainly have one major rear uh, rear bed, and then you've got your dinette that converts to a second sleeping area in most of the A-frames. With the Ascape, the way that it's set up, uh, you get really one sleeping area. So it's predominantly going to be for couples or single campers. Okay. It's not really going to be built for family. So demographically, still probably more so couples and and tend to skew towards the retirement side. You know, 50 plus is uh, who, we've, who we've historically gotten the much, most attention from. But with younger people these days, either not having kids or waiting to have kids, we are starting to see a lot of younger buyers coming in for these smaller and lightweight products also. Hmm. Uh, so we're kind of kind of getting a uh, a wider spread now than we have historically. Okay. And then from the, the product standpoint, you know, um, 
the needs for the buyers tend to be different. So the A-liner people like the idea of the low profile. Um, you know, you can see around it, keeps your gas mileage as good as it's going to be when you're towing something with the low profile of a folding camper. Um, again, gives you a little bit more space. But there are some people who, and then like an A-liner, you know, could park it in your garage, for example, because of the because of the low profile when it's folded down. Uh, the only downside of the Escape is it with the air conditioner on top, it's eight foot four. So mm -hmm. you're not going to put it into your standard garage door. But really, the people who are buying the Escape um, tend to have different needs. They may have had a folding camper in the past, and they just don't want to fold anything up and down anymore. Or they've got a physical liability. they got a shoulder problem or they can't push up roof panels anymore uh, like you need to on an A-liner. So what, you know, weight-wise and price-wise even, comparing against comparable models, you know, Escape's coming in at like 1,700 pounds. So very comparable to like a Ranger 12. Um, so we're basically just giving people... Um, the option to have something that folds or not, but continuing to focus on the lightweight segment for the smaller tow vehicles and all that kind of stuff. But you know how camping goes, and especially smaller lightweight camping, everything's always trade-offs, right? You're, you're not going to have a 30-footer where you've got fireplaces and 42-inch flat-screen TVs uh, when you're talking about 10 or 12-foot living spaces. Uh, it's always a little bit of a trade-off one way or the other. That's interesting. Do you think um, the Escape would be considered um, like a little more secure as well as possibly um, it might handle the colder weather um, and maybe the warmer weather a little bit better than a standard um, A-frame camper just because of the construction of it? You know, in the end, the the insulation values, the way the walls, sidewalls are constructed and all that kind of stuff are very similar. Okay. So I don't think there's really any giant difference in the way that they contain air conditioning or if you're running your furnace, how they contain heat. Um, they're all going to be laminated vacuum bonded panels as far as wall construction is concerned. So um, in general, it really just comes down to people's preference of wanting to either have the low profile and garageable. I mean, garageable is becoming a huge thing. When people talk about 50 to $100 a month in storage, yeah. If, yeah. you know, the association area, you know, garageability is a big factor. Uh, for a lot of people, but, um, you know, some people just prefer not to have any assembly required at all. And that's where the escape comes in. Hmm. Um, so there was, there was quite a bit of differences. Well, there's some differences between, you know, the A-liner amp, the one on the A-frame um, and the escape amp. And I think the, the big thing that kind of jumped out at me was the difference in the um, solar panels capacity on the Escape versus the um, the A liner amp, so you had like 800 watts, um, two solar panels on the on the A frame version, um, and the Escape, I think it's like 185 watts, um, yeah. as opposed. And so, can you walk us through that where you're just kind of limited in the the footprint of the roof where you could add the solar panels, and then how do you, um, is there kind of a difference in approach in regards to boondocking and how how long you could stay out with the Escape versus the A-frame? Yeah, so you're exactly right. The The profile of the roof of the Escape, which is very aerodynamic and sleek and, and by design, um, that only leaves us a few feet of flat roof space in the back of the trailer. And at this point, that space is occupied by your air conditioner, uh, your vent fan over the bathroom and the ST model in particular, um, but really it's the air conditioner that takes up all that space. And then your Thule awning that also goes across the rear of the trailer sticks up above the roof, uh, just a couple inches. So that space was taken up. So we couldn't do the big, um, hard panels. So we had to go with a flexible panel and put that on the front slope of the trailer, which, um, you know, you're definitely going to get faster recharge times out of the 800 Watts of solar that are on the, uh, a liner versus 185 on the a skate. But, uh, the nice thing is the Escape panel is wired right to the inside of the trailer. So you still have your Zamp solar port on the south side, on the side of the trailer that you could add an additional portable panel. You know, the size would be customer's choice, basically. But uh, there is the ability to add more more solar, too, if you if you wanted to. And that extends your your time out in the in the in the field. So, yeah, from a boondocking standpoint, you know, it's hard. It's always it's a subjective thing, right? Depends on how much power you're really using, what you're drawing on. Uh, how much sunlight you have, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I would say like, let's sit, take the Escape, for example, with a little bit less solar capacity, just at the 185 watts. Um, the question really comes down to how much air conditioning are you running? Yeah. You know, the C is going to be the big draw, right? 
So if you're just running LED lights, your water pump, that kind of stuff, you know, you could be out there easily for five, six days, I'm sure. Now, if you start kicking that air conditioner on, uh, if you have to run the AC a bunch, that would shorten the time that, you know, you're going to have, uh, obviously the battery, the battery will, will run down over the course of, I think probably that AC would run. And again, I'm not the technical guy. We could have got, could have got Tim involved to, to get the technical facts, but, um, with that 185 watt panel and the five kilowatt battery that's in the Ascape amp, um, I would think that you could run that air conditioner for every bit of five to six hours, right around there. Yeah. And depending on sunlight, again, the you know it's uh, very variable based on cloud cover and all that stuff. But you know, four to six hours for sure uh, off the battery before you got to get to the recharge. And that's a nice thing about the EcoFlow system is uh, being a free eight volt system. It's the most efficient and it also recharges very quickly. Yeah. Interesting. Um, did you do some of the similar appliances on the Ascape versus the um, the A liner amp? You know, the induction stovetop, on demand water heater, um, and I think I noticed where on the Ascape you have a gray water tank versus the regular A liner, um, which doesn't have a gray water tank. Is that is that, is that right? Yeah. So both models um, do get the tankless on-demand water heater now that so that's going to be standard equipment and anything that's a evolution equipment level so an a-liner evolution and above evolution including the uh the amp a-liner and Ascape. so uh tankless on-demand water heaters are in both right now the induction cooktop is only in the a-liner i talked okay. to alan morning, our sales manager and he i just to confirm it i said is the induction going into the amp he said right now they're still using a glass covered uh two burner propane stove in there yeah which I know we'll talk about propane here in a little bit too. Um, but the induction, what was the third part of that? Did you ask? The induction, the, oh, and I also talked about the gray water tank. Right. Um, so they, that, yeah, that's, that's an anomaly in the RV industry as a whole. For whatever reason, folding campers, generally speaking, don't get great water tanks. And I don't know why that is. If you look at like a, a high wall pop-up, and I mean a 14 foot box that's got you know, giant side walls, and we're talking a 3,000 pound or 3,500 pound camper that's got a full bathroom in it. Occasionally, those high wall units will have a gray tank. But if you're looking at your traditional 8, 10, 12, uh, 14, no, not 14 so much, but uh, 8, 10 or 12 foot folding campers, they don't have gray tanks, even if they do have bathrooms in them. Hmm. So that's kind of just a weird thing that happens in this industry. So you, you just bring, need to bring, you know, like a portable tank. They've got the tote tanks that have wheels on them. You can bring yeah. Uh, depending on how much water usage you're actually going to do. But yeah, then being standard equipment and travel trailers, we went with a, a gray tank in um, in the Ascape. Now, um, let me double check that real fast because the Ascape ST, which we're only, we only build two Ascapes. There's the ST, which is the shower toilet combo. And then there's the Plus, which has just a cassette toilet. Um, the... ST for sure gets the gray tank. I'm just double checking real quick to make sure that, uh, yeah, the, the plus does too. So even the amp will have it mainly just going to be con containing your, your sink water. Cause you don't have the shower inside that model. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, they're, you know, you, some of those campgrounds that you go to want the, you know, the fully self-contained, um, you know, travel trailers. And I guess that, I guess that is relatively, um, fully contained, you know, so you've got your cassette toilet, um, and then, you know, you don't have, you have a shower outside. I guess that's not fully self-contained, but still the right. sink goes into the, the gray water tank. And so you could, you know, stay at some of those, you know, fancy <laughs> kind of campgrounds um, yeah. with your small little escape trailer. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I had somebody ask me the other day about it because um, mainly just having a toilet in general, because they were going to go to some wineries or something that you could actually yeah. camp and stay overnight. But, but because it's not a campground, yeah. And the, you know, the, the winery wouldn't be open at night that you had to have, have a bathroom. So a tent camper or even an A-liner without a, a toilet in it, you wouldn't be able to stay. So, you know, another advantage to both the Ascape products is that you have a toilet in both. And obviously we've got plenty of options in A-liner to, to have a toilet as well. So. Do you think the, um, the gas mileage when you're, you said that it's around 1700 pounds, the, you know, because of the, the, the teardrop shape, would it be all? you know, similar in gas mileage and towing a regular, you know, A-frame that, you know, is is very low profile or would you lose a little bit? 
You know, you probably take down a couple miles per gallon just because you're taking on more frontal resistance. Um, you know, depending on your tow vehicle with an A-liner, you've got uh, most of that camper is generally in your 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 slipstream or your your uh, aerodynamic uh, profile as you're going down the road. So the, the A-scape does stick up a few feet above your tow vehicle, but uh, might 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 knock your mileage down a couple additional miles per gallon. But as light as it is and as aer aerodynamic as it is, I wouldn't say that it's a, a major difference. Um, I'm kind of curious. Um, so going back just to the regular um, AMP product, I'm mm -hmm. kind of curious on folks that have purchased it. What kind of are you getting some good or bad feedback on uh, that product and how is it kind of handling, um, you know, the boondocking and being out battery lasting? Yeah. Yeah. So the crazy part is, you know, again, we just introduced these at the end of September at the big dealer show. So we started building the A-liners through the fourth quarter and we've been shipping them to dealers. But then we went straight into non-peak camping season. You know, fourth quarter is usually our yeah. slowest, yeah. November, December, January, um, or October through December and then January here. So they're on dealers lots and we've had them at a couple retail shows and we have retailed a few already. Okay. Even though we've only had, what, three weeks, three, three four weeks of shows here. Uh, so we've actually got some retails already. We've got really great interest coming, uh, you know, via our internet web leads and all that kind of stuff. So the jury still will be out to till we get to spring and summer to get some real exposure. But I can tell you that when I was in uh, the Hershey RV show, we had pretty decent weather and I didn't get to mess with the system. It was the first time I was exposed to the whole eco flow system. And the first time I you know, was uh, selling any of our lithium solar package because it was the first time we had done it. But um with the sun that we had there and really I ran the air conditioner pretty much full time. Now we had generators there too plugged in, but I, at one point I had turned, unplugged the generator, the shore power and um, with full sunlight, that battery was going to run that air conditioner for like 12 hours. Wow. Well, that's op optimum conditions, right? I mean, there's not a cloud in the sky. It was eight to five degrees outside. So it was hot and sunny, but um that battery was going to run the 9,000 BTU AC heat pump and the refrigerator was also running. The three-way refrigerator was running and it, it's runtime before the battery ran out was going to be like 12 hours. Wow. That's pretty amazing. That was pretty amazing. Hmm. So, um, so far all indications and same thing in Indiana at the open house, that show we were not plugged in and we didn't have generators and we had great sunlight down there at least one of the days. And same thing, we had the AC running and projected runtime was like 12 hours uh, same thing with the refrigerator was on, but uh, yeah, you know, again, it's going to be tough to tell how it's all about the conditions and how much air, air conditioning you're running is really what it, what it's going to boil down to. Can you talk about the Delta difference between, you know, the standard escape, um, I guess the one without the, um, without the shower, without the um, shower and uh, the, the escape amp and kind of what the difference in, in kind of retail pricing or list pricing is of those two units? Yeah, so your MSRP, your list prices on the standard escapes are gonna be right around 30,000. Okay. Uh, that's before freight. So again, depending on if you're close to the factory where we are in Pennsylvania, if we're all the way out West, uh, freight numbers can vary pretty pretty widely. But um, retail on the standard plus, for example, which is gonna be the same build and same floor plan as the AMP, you're talking an MSRP of roughly around 30,000, where on your, um, uh, MSRP on the uh, Ascape amp is more like like forty nine, almost fifty thousand. Now that's full boat retail, but yeah. um, there's pretty pretty good spread because that EcoFlow system. I mean, again, to go over that just so everybody remembers or does if for anybody doesn't know what's in that. I mean, that provides the solar panels, uh, the one hundred eighty five watt solar panel on the Ascape, or the eight hundred watts of solar on the A liner, which is the only difference in the two systems. And then uh, from there, you got a five kW, you know, five kilowatt hour battery. Um, it's a 48 volt system, which is the most efficient uh, system out there as far as uh, efficiency of power and, and not losing the power that you're generating. It's all going straight to the battery. Uh, you've got a 3600 watt inverter, and then there's a, a nice converter panel in there that's got all your controls and then a, uh, a monitor panel that, you know, once you have the system up and running, you don't ever have to touch any of it. It's just plug and play. It's a very clean wiring system. It's actually the cleanest system I've ever seen as far as wiring is concerned which also makes it one of the safest systems out there. Um, but the LCD panel that you, you you can check your inputs and outputs, you can see exactly what's running on off the battery or not off the battery. 
and uh, it's very, very simple and easy to use. Is there any sort of other features that um, differentiate the kind of the, like the regular Ascape um, um, over the Ascape AMP? In, yeah. And so is there any other differences other than the um, kind of the echo flow system? Yeah, so uh, we definitely upgraded everything, just like the A-Liner versus the A-Liner Evolution or the A-Liner AMP. Uh, we went with the toy hauler style flooring versus the traditional linoleum floor that would be like in this standard AMP, you get traditional linoleum. Or in the traditional Ascape, you get traditional linoleum, and then in the AMP, you get the toy hauler style flooring. So, uh, you know, no scratches, easier to clean, all that kind of stuff. Um, we went with a high density plastic cabinet in there with a aluminum structure versus a wood on wood cabinet. Okay. And then you, yeah, you got upgraded cushions as well inside the um, for the bed areas and the seating areas in the AMP, and then they upgraded the uh, the dinette table as well. So it's. Uh, a more sturdy um, telescoping table that uh, operates a little bit easier than the pedestal table that was in the uh, the standard Ascape. So you and know, then like like you mentioned earlier too, the on-demand water heater as well. Okay. okay, so you know I've got I've got this thing with twin beds. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you know the thing I like the thing that we do with our A-liners is is you know other than the you know, kind of the, you know, propping up the roof and stuff like that. You know, we have both of our beds. We have, I've got a classic that has the permanent bed. Um, and then my wife has the dinette and we just keep them all set up. So we don't, you know, we like to make it simple. So when we can't, we just don't want to have to, you know, pull the cushions out and do all that kind of other stuff. Right. Um, on that Ascape um, product, you know, you've got the, the, I guess the, the cushions or the, or the galley that, um, um, you know, where they can sit across from one another. Can those also kind of, are, do those have enough width to be like a twin bed where you could just sleep on those? Or is that, or is this really designed for you to set up that bed, um, kind of every night? Yeah, it really is. Um, again, cause that trailer only being like six and a quarter feet wide and about a 10 foot living space it really is pretty much either the dinette or the bed. And I think, you know, kind of like an A-liner and you guys, most of the time, I think you probably set it up into a bed configuration and, and leave it that way and eat outside yeah. at the picnic table or something along those lines. But the dinette benches are not wide enough themselves for the average adult to sleep on. Okay. Now they, they kind of pull into the center. They kind of like a, like a gaucho almost, or like a rear sofa in a classic. There's a board that you pull into the center on, and that comes from underneath both dinette benches. And that's how you can create what really becomes almost a king size bed. That's the amazing part. Mm. A 10 foot trailer, the bed in that thing is 70, uh, 79 inches, um, 77 by 72. So, yeah. you know, 70 by, well, 80 by 80 would be a true king size bed, but 77 by 72 in a 10 foot trailer. So, Long story short is you, I have talked to people who said, well, it's just me. So maybe sometimes I'll just pull out one side of it and just sleep on one side. But for all intents and purposes, it's really meant to be put into one large sleeping area. Okay. Okay. Um, on the, on the AMP product, and we kind of got into this a little bit when we did our other, other show, um, you know, you can expand um, past the five kilowatt hour battery um, to, you know, 10 or maybe even 15. Yeah. Is there any sp space anywhere in the um in the Ascape to do something similar or are you kind of sort of limited to that 5 5 kilowatt hour battery? Yeah, that would be the tricky part because um we've got so much standard equipment in this Ascape as it is. Yeah. Most of the bench space underneath there is taken up by either furnaces or water heaters or different appliances or plumbing. Yeah. Um, so I would have to double check with the factory for sure to see in the in the Ascape if there's room underneath one of those benches to get a second battery in there, right. uh, because otherwise um, it would be it'd be a little bit tight there. Um, okay. The one cabinet when you come in has got the your cassette toilet. The cabinet next to that is where the whole EcoFlow system, the battery yeah. and the converter and all that sits. So yeah, I'd have to double check on that one to be sure. Now I you know like you said in the A liner generally speaking underneath one of the dinette benches or underneath the rear sofa or rear mattress, that's where you would be able to, to store a second or third battery pretty easily. But the Ascape, uh, I'd have to double check on that. Um, would you mind if um, I just pull up a couple of the photos and you kind of walk us through through it a sure. little bit? Okay, sure. great. 
thanks for taking the time. No, no problem. And so here's, I guess, the um, the current layout of it um, that we have. Now, this is the current layout. Is there a plan for another layout with the, um, I don't see where the shower would go. Is there plan plans for an alternate layout or can you walk us through this layout right first and then? Um, yeah, so that is what we're calling the plus. And then in the amp, it's just the Ascape amp plus. Um, and, and that is why we went with this floor plan for the, for the lithium and solar, because, uh, as you come in the entry door there from the rear on the right hand side, you've got your uh, cassette toilet leading to the cabinet where, uh, your, your EcoFlow system will actually be. And then that butts right up against your dinette benches, which turns into your dinette or sleeping area. So, uh, on the left hand side, as you're entering, that's where your galley's at. So your sink and stove, refrigerator, microwave, all that stuff's going to be on your left hand side. So that's why we had to go with this floor plan. Usually if you were walking into that rear entry door in the ST, which has the shower. Oh, they that... actually, they actually say induction cooktop, but that's not the case. No, I did confirm that this morning. As of right now, uh, they are putting the two burner glass covered stove in there. So I'm not sure why they didn't drag that into both products, but Okay. I did ask Alan that this morning. Okay. Um, but yeah, so the, the ST, when you've got, as you're walking in from the rear on the right-hand side, that entire area ends up becoming your shower toilet combination. And uh, that then eliminates the cabinet where the EcoFlow system yeah. currently sits. Yeah. So yeah. again, you know, when you're talking about a, a 10 foot living space by six feet wide, uh, like I said, in small, small lightweight camping, there's always, always trade-offs. Yeah, I did notice. I mean, I mean, I, I kind of looked at the um like the video from I can't remember, it's one of your bigger, bigger dealers. And um, you know, they do walkthroughs of all your campers. And it was kind of amazing, you know, in that in such a small trailer, you know, how when you step into it, it just feels larger. And then you had you did have the benefit because, you know, because it has the higher walls and they, it doesn't have to collapse or you had a lot of your overhead storage. Um, so that was actually, you know, it's pretty neat. Yeah, no, it is. And that's, that's the unique thing about the Escape versus a lot of other teardrops. Um, we engineered this so that the floor in the back of it is like a, it's a two, it's a dropped floor basically in the back, which gives us a six foot four standing interior height. Cause most teardrops um, of comparable size are really, really only gonna give you about a five foot eight interior, generally speaking. So that's why we came up with this idea to give people who are taller than five foot eight an opportunity to get in and out of something that still is a teardrop style trailer and stu still super light. But yeah, I mean, for for um, as small of a trailer as it is, again, just like the A-liner to a certain extent, lots of windows, lots of daylight. And then with the extended ceiling height, it does feel bigger than than it really is. Yeah, so I'm showing it right now an image of the, um, the area. Um, as you enter the um, the escape, and so we've yep. got we've got the overhead um, AC. Now, is that a heat pump? Does that provide heat too, or is that just a, basically an air conditioner? So that is just a nine thousand BTU uh, AC electric AC only. Okay. So that's a, a low profile uh, Coleman. I can't remember which one it is a Mach five or nine, something like that. But yeah, that's a nine thousand BTU electric AC only. And and I know we're going to get there eventually, but we did leave propane on these units specifically. Um, to not try and go full electric and put all the burden on the batteries, yeah, um, you know, and and we can get to that, but in a minute. But yeah, from that rear view there, you can kind of see um, nice overhead cabinets. Uh, you got the cassette toilet there just to the left of the door. Your EcoFlow systems in the cabinet to the left of that, and then your galley is really a pretty awesome setup for such a small trailer. You got the glass covered sink and stove. Um, you got the range hood. Uh, there's a microwave up there, and then you still keep the Three cubic foot, uh, three way refrigerator from Dometic is also in there. Yeah, it's you know I, I really like the combination of the um, of the white and gray. I, I think that looks really really good. Um, yeah, it looks looks awesome, and I imagine that that air conditioner does a pretty good of cooling, pretty good job of cooling that space as well. It does. Yeah, that's plenty of AC for such a small trailer, and yeah, that you can see now what we're talking about there. You know, a traditional Escape would have wood cabinets with a wood structure. Uh, the linoleum flooring and uh, a little bit lighter, uh, thinner uh, cushion. But yeah, that high density plastic cabinetry, the white, gray, black combo, I mean, just came out super sharp. Yeah, it did. Let me pull up the um, other image real quick. I guess we don't really need to highlight anything else here. The sink looks 
relatively big and relatively deep too. It is, yeah. That's a large sink for um, for for such a small trailer. That's a pretty deep. Um, There's a lot, a lot of counter space too, because you've got the the flat, um, I guess, cooktop, um, and so you and on the other side above the um, above the battery and the um, echo flow system, you have additional kind of counter space over there, and all that overhead storage is just awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah, really pretty, pretty amazing for such a small trailer. Yeah, I have one of those associations that I can't park anything outside so that yep. is, this wouldn't fit in our garage unfortunately let me pull up the um, other interior and so this is the um the shot um facing the bed um and then you do have the um I guess the LCD screen there and you have storage underneath the um cushions is that right yeah so those two large square cushions towards the front of the trailer uh, just past the dinette benches there Okay. Those are hinged and have gas struts under there. So that entire area is open storage, which is a, is a pretty substantial amount of uh, open uh, storage for different items. Okay. And yeah. And that, is that accessible from the outside too? It's not actually. Okay. There's uh, different uh, restrictions. We've got different things in places that we, there's no baggage door we could find that would fit up there. We It would be great if we could get one, but okay. there's no uh, door that we can find right now that we could fit on the side of that. Okay. And you have a lot of just overhead, looks like overhead storage that is just kind of open where you can pile stuff in there. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So you've got a couple of cabinets with doors on them, and then you've got some open bulk space up across the front of the trailer. And then uh, behind the TV there, uh, all that, that whole cabinet across the front of the trailer is all open storage in there too. So again, pretty decent amount of storage for a, for a, a smaller, uh, you know, teardrop style trailer. And then you have, um, Propane, you have two tanks on the on the front of the trailer. Is that right? Yeah, two 20 pounders with the auto changeover. So you got 40 pounds of propane up there and one tank runs out, it just kicks right over to the next one. Okay. And the and you're using that propane quite a bit. So you've got the furnace and then you've got the, I guess the the regular stove top, and then you've got the three-way fridge that can also use the propane as the um uh, as the power source. So yeah, yeah that... it, it seems like if you if you're you know, if you're not really in a hot area, that's you know, that echo flow system is going to last for quite a while. That's the thing. Again, it really comes down to air conditioning. And that's why we went with basically a hybrid on this first run. There have been manufacturers who tried to go full electric only, but, you know, what happens when you don't have sun for three or four days or whatever the case may be? So, um, yeah, we left the propane system on because, like you said, the furnace, the water heater, uh, the stovetop, and even the refrigerator could be run and take off uh, some of that power burden off of the off the battery. So uh, I think it's the best of both worlds, really. Yeah. Is that are those are those um are is that glass windows on the side or is that a plastic or what 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 are uh, those are the uh, the thermoplastic uh, plastic windows? But those are really nice. Those uh, crank open from the bottom and they open all the way up. And then there's a uh, nightshade and a screen that pulls up or down. So. Um, those give you a ton of ventilation and then you've got uh, multiple options for just having screens up or you can pull up the, the privacy curtains for nighttime. Yeah. Um, how does this, how, do, what is, how is the, how are you guys um, pricing this in regards to um, similar kind of teardrop campers? Are you kind of more at the upper end or kind of in the middle or? Um... <laughs> yeah. So the standard escape comes in pretty much, in the bulk, you know, if you look at other other products out there, there's all kinds of uh, new entrants into the to the teardrop market these days. But hmm. looking at extreme outdoors or new camp or the new mod buggies that you probably have seen out there, we're all in the same general price range. You know, MSRP up there around thirty thousand, and then anytime you add the lithium and solar, and especially a, a, a system as nice as the EcoFlow, yeah, um, that's that's where the extra money comes in. But most of us are now offering some version of a, a solar lithium package. So once you get into that realm, yeah, pricing stays pretty consistent. You know, it's okay. relatively similar. Okay. Well, do you have anything else to do? I've got the um, I've got the basic version of Zoom. So they they, they, yeah. knock, me off. they knock me off out of after forty minutes or so. Um, do yeah, you have no, anything else you want to talk about, Chuck? I'm right there with you. But no, but I'll, not much else than that. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to to talk about these new products and they will be out at dealers lots here. Um, the the Escape run started this week. 
So the Acecapes will be hitting dealers last. We're going to run Acecapes through the end of January and, and through February here. So you'll start seeing Acecape amps on dealers lots between February and March. And uh, yeah, I'd encourage everybody to head out to their local RV show over the next couple of months and check out the A-liners that are out there. We've got the 40th anniversary edition because A-liners celebrating our 40th year in business this year, which is quite an accomplishment for a small independent company. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to another great camping season coming up here in a couple of months. Well, and somebody I heard I heard that the um, twin bed might be coming back. <laughs> well, we we did actually bring the twin bed evolution back, so it's a it's a 15 foot cabin, and it, it we we actually had it in Grand Rapids, Michigan last weekend, and we got a ton of ton of uh, good feedback on that. Oh, really? Oh, you actually showed that? That's great. We did actually. Yeah, that was the first show I got to work with it. But uh, in general, yeah, we do have a twin bed option back. We we lost it before COVID or uh, discontinued it during COVID just because. You know, trying to be efficient and streamline things, but um, we 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 brought it back by popular demand. Yeah, <laughs> my my popularity. I was like, bring it back, bring it back. So yeah, um, well, that's great. I think maybe we can get together again to talk a little bit about that. That'd be terrific. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Okay, well, Ch Chuck, thanks again so much for your time. And no uh, yeah, have have fun in Green Bay. Thank you very much. <laughs> have a great day. Okay, bye. Bye.